Hello everybody, this is Edgar Eddie Fernandez, the founder of Efficient Limited and the creator of the uh, Experiential Knowledge Solutions Program. Um, uh, to, uh, what is the objective of this program is to understand and optimize the ideas of workers and employees to avoid people get injured, reduce cost, and increase performance and production. That's the objective of the Experiential Knowledge Solutions. Well, after this intro, let me talk to you about an article that I found that I'm gonna actually uh, I'm gonna share with you the link. I think it's a must read article that that, that you should uh, that you should um, that you should have on your hands. Um, I found this one. It is the author. It's um, Michael Gutta, and uh, it's referring to small business operations. And the title is the All Eight Overlooked Worksite Safety Practices, and it's very very. Um, very interesting article very graphical as well more than than uh, paragraphs and words but very concise and actually yeah most of the safety issues um uh, although we have uh, the iso 40 45001 uh, we have the osha star program in the united states here in canada we have core none of those programs have, um i'm not saying the programs are bad I think we are using, we are, we are, um, we are focusing those programs in the wrong way, and um, because still we have in the United States around in 2017 around 5,147 5, uh, fatalities, and then um, 20, 20, 20.7 percent of those fatalities were in the construction industry. In Canada, the numbers are not high, but it's obviously because the population is very is is way way less. But um, the number is the same. We have 3,000, uh, around the 3,000 uh, uh, lost time incidents, um, around 800 fatalities as well in 2017. So although we have all these safety management programs, all these safety certifications, we haven't achieved the goal to reduce uh, these, uh, these numbers uh, significantly, I would say. We have reduced those ones, but not in, in a great manner. And the reason why is, is it, it's very simple, and I totally agree with this article, actually. It's because most of the companies, according to this article, tend to focus on, so I'm quoting, most of the companies tend to focus only on the output of the, they are performing rather than the apparent necessity inside of the work site, which is the safety of the workers. Totally agree. Because one of one, once um, companies achieve core, or they achieve the ISO 45, a thousand and one or or before the oceans eighteen thousand and one they believe we try we we will we 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 believe that our company is safe and it's not that's the the that's the the there are two components actually big components in safety right is your safety management program that is content hazard assessments um procedures and uh, training and communication, pretty much the elements. For example, core, you have your policy, you have identification of hazards, uh, you have uh, control of hazard, uh, identification, and, uh, identification of hazards and risk. You have how you control those hazards and risks as well. You have the training component. You have incident investigation component. You have general health and safety components. You have in incident investigation components. You have emergency components. You have how you manage, um, uh, you not know, as in injuries management as well, and then you have how you measure your safety management program, pre pretty much KPIs. The another component that we and I agree with this article that is uh, inviting us or, or encouraging us to see inside of the companies what is your plan to reduce incidents, what is your plan to make your workplace safer. And it's not a bunch of procedures of, of training, of fancy training programs, to be honest with you. This article nailed it really, really perfectly. And that's the reason why I'm, I'm talking very passionate about it. Because really, in companies, we don't have a program to reduce, to, to reduce incidents. Hazard risk assessments help, absolutely. But what we do with the data that we are, with the information that we are generating, we are assessing continuously the hazards and risks of, of each or one of the work extensions that you have. We have communicated with people. That's the thing that is this article is, is talking about. And be honest with you, 
I don't think uh, we are we are not doing a great job on that. But uh, but we can we we can improve. So once we recognize this, that we need to actually increase hazard and risk assessments, um, and use other techniques or other method methodologies to to put in play a plan a, a pl in play in place a plan to reduce uh, in injuries and incidents is when we want to see our numbers significantly decreased in a national way i'm talking about because may, i'm sure many of the companies and i have worked with some of them they are very 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 high on safety so um but in the small businesses on other ones unfortunately not but it, it, it's it's okay it's normal but uh, if you are starting your own business and your own manufacturing uh, business something that you need to focus from the beginning actually is on according to this article that i'm totally agree is focus on the safety of your workers not on the output of those safety management programs and certifications i'm not telling you you need to get them for sure you need to have a safety management program but everybody believe that having that you are okay and is uh, you are not okay and um so also says that in this article because i'm reading it is uh, each situation employees must be aware of the surroundings so that's part of your hazard and risk assessment pretty much so let me let me jump right away to the uh to the uh, eight, the eight steps that you shouldn't uh, ignore awareness so actually um if you want uh, you can go to my last video that i, I called uh, the future of safety of the geek economy one of the things is, is the awareness how much is too much awareness and it's something here actually you need to make aware you uh, your workers but be careful when you use technology because on that video that i that i and also i share that article on my uh, linking page uh, uh, it's uh say fission 4.0 you can go there and and download the article as well it's uh, now the awareness has become in a click and a rings and uh, sounds of yourself in your cell phone and nobody's reading that and that's the reality so we need to be careful when you use technology i'm very um, i'm very positive and encourage people to use technology because i'm i have done many videos and art and reading uh, articles uh, about that but also you please don't forget that you need to interact with people and build those relationships and pretty much is this so how much do you want to make people aware about build those relationships review your training safety program it everything it's included there everything you all the hazards that they need to they need to be communicated by the safety or the hr department they are there so all those elements then you need to assess so hazard assessments training programs and communication that is part of core as well in canada and the osha study in the united states and for all other uh, safety management programs that isos the iso 40001 the number two is the stress management. Um, unfortunately, nowadays uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, work stress related, uh, mental health, and um, sorry, and that's something that, believe it or not, is affecting workers. Uh, so one day somebody is having troubles at home, comes to work, and then suddenly has an, an, an uh, is involved in an incident. And gets injured so always the, so you need to establish your uh, mental health and work stress uh, 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 safety program how you're gonna assess and identify those signs that people are stressed and also and the most important what is gonna be the communication process for the worker to communicate to you that to you human resources or his boss or her boss that he or she is uh, is stressed so how we can help people actually to deal with these type of problems uh, that they have in, in in their normal lives and at the end there are people who work with us and there are people that they are making the company successful and achieving goals uh, to sell more or to produce more uh, and all the type of goals of the company so i think at least is something that we need to recognize so have your management and stress program a uh, work stress related program and your mental health program as well and i think nowadays many companies they offer uh, um they, they are high they, they hire uh, uh, 
packages with the insurance companies and with psychologists uh, they, they they can help you but it, it, here it's, it's something that uh, this communication they need to be more uh, they need to happen more frequent number three effective communication what is effective communication it's an awareness poster it's an awareness tweet it's an awareness email it's an awareness it's an awareness uh, shot screen on your computer that work what is that so it's the, the question here is how we have communicated efficiently and effective so something how, how you can do that uh, i think i'm uh, in my opinion this is my opinion there is not only one way to communicate i think we need to uh, i think i'm suggesting to use more ways of communication uh, posters uh, that's the old way to do it uh, in my in my opinion they are not effective to be honest with you the thing that is effective is awareness on on, on the company using um, I mean, the screenshots have been doing that before uh, sending um, also emails to people uh, to the workers that are that, that are involved in the certain workstation and the most important is building the relationships with them it's going to the floor spending most time of your 50 percent of your time as a safety uh, professional in on the floor and and see how you can help them and, and how you can make them and, and communicate with them that's effective communication effective communication is not a poster saying you need to work in teams or you need to be safe or, or as a team we achieve this effective communication is to know what the other part needs is to know the necessities and and to share the ideas that's the reason why you need to optimize and understand ideas to oh, to achieve many goals and one of the goals is to p stop people get injured you can increase uh, productivity as well you can increase performance you can reduce cost you can achieve many things only by communicating in an effective way i think nowadays we are complicating this process of communication that is very simple is the com who's who's sending the message the communication um, media package and who's the receiver right so those the, the, that channel and we need to make sure that both sides the guy who's sending the the message we need to make sure that the other side the receptor is understanding the message that's very simple don't complicate the process anymore uh, more it's very simple it's very very simple and how you can achieve it communicating face to face use technology as well i'm not telling you not do it use it as well but don't forget the component of building relationships and actually this video says that this uh direct discussing of the day goals and activities is a good start to minimize unexpected injuries um more of some companies they have safe morning safety meetings especially in the oil and gas industry when you work in remote areas so make sure to make that safety meeting a little bit different, um, not as um, everybody is in a in a shack and safe the safety specialist in the front is on front and then communicate things. No, you can do that as well, and also go to the field and talk to people, see what they are, what they need, how, what they are facing. Physical fitness. This is an excellent, and I think companies are are, are more aware about this uh, nowadays. It's uh, if people that are uh, fit to perform the job, especially in, in areas like construction or, or other uh, uh, manufacturing areas when you need to lift, when you need to walk, when you need to pull, when you need to uh, hang, when you need to uh, push, for example. And then all that, uh, the physical assessments actually um, help you a lot. Uh, one, sorry, one of the companies that I worked before, excuse me, they implement the physical assessments, physical fitness test. And we, we were, well, the strategy was capable to reduce um, around 30% of the incidents, of the injuries, sorry, by having the physical fitness uh, program. Because that's going to that's gonna tell you, be performed by a, a, conducted by a professional a doctor, it's going to tell you that physical uh, fitness test is going to, let us know if the person is capable or not to do the job. And you can reduce 30% of the injuries uh, before that person, actually, that worker, uh, start working with you. So I think that is a, a, a good strategy to have. 
Um, and um, I, 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 my recommendation you should, you should have it. So um, also physical fitness is not only pull and push and and lift. It's uh, um, illnesses like uh, flu, uh, heat, cold, stress, for example. All that stuff. Also, th we need to uh, have a program to to at least uh, workers communicate uh, between them and supervisors that uh, today are not fit to work, mentally and physically. Because um, most of the times, and there are people, um, most of the people, I would say 95%, 98% uh, people are responsible and they have work ethic, right? So uh, I would say, uh, but sometimes we misunderstand that by I mean, uh, showing up to work on feet. Uh, maybe you didn't sleep uh, last night and uh, you are not fit to work. So it's not only physical, it's only mentally as well. Mm. Number fifth, uh, it's mishandling uh, volatile materials. I would say uh, in this one, it's not only volatile materials, it's corrosive materials. So now in, uh, around the globe, in the United States, Canada, Mexico, uh, Germany, etc. Now we are harmonized. So we have the global harmonized system. In Canada, it's women still we call in that name. Uh, however, it's, it's most of the elements uh, are from, uh, from the global harmonized system, the same in the United States. So in other words, you need to have the MSDSs, you need to assess the hazards and risks of the substances that you want, that your workers are going to be handling, uh, signage and education so the training and, and the PPE as well so you need to assess that you need to have in other words uh, you, you need to develop your chemical safety program and uh, and there is a re regulation in the United States uh, I don't remember right now but it's about the chemical safety program and um, the, in Canada it, it's not exactly called a safe uh, uh, but it's women's actually the chemical safety program so um, you need to develop you need to educate your people on that you need to let them let you need to uh, teach them uh, how to read an msds where the msds they can be found they're gonna be where they're gonna be located to read to understand the signage as well and the labels and, uh, and what type of uh, uh, con uh, control you're gonna use to minimize the risk you can use engineering, you can use administrative, you can use uh, PPE, or even before you can uh, eliminate or, so, or substitute the, the hazard. So you need to have five, you follow those uh, five uh, hierarchy of, hierarchy of uh, hazard control. Number six, actually, minimizing works uh, site distractions. Um, in the construction, according to this article, um, and, uh, and I'm quoting because uh, my experience is this not in construction, I need to be honest with you. My experience is in manufacturing, pharmaceutical, chemical, and the oil and gas. So in construction, I don't have uh, experience. But uh, according to this article that is made by to the construction workers, there are a lot of distractions. Mo moving paths, for example, in the manufacturing industry, go back and forth, for clips, for example, that is a distraction. Um, uh, mobile devices uh, is something that nowadays some of the some of the companies that I have, that I have worked it's uh, the policy is you're gonna leave your cell phone at your locker and inside your locker and also uh, if, if your family or somebody needs to contact you uh, you can keep the phone of the receptionist that but that's the policy where comp where uh, I have worked um, I don't I don't know what is your policy but cell phones there is a, you have cell phones on the manufacturing side inside of the uh, on the manufacturing production area for sure it's gonna cause a distraction i don't know if it's gonna cause an incident but obviously can be a cause for an incident as well so uh, be aware of that assess that uh, type of distraction and determine what actions you, you want to follow that's it um, uh, and this article, I understand uh, the article, the, uh, the, uh, the, the author says, sorry, says, yeah, everybody, your activities uh, need to be performed hands-free. So you, your hands and your mind needs to be focused on the job. Uh, and it is not different from, from somewhere else. Innovation, excellent, excellent point that I'm seeing on innovation because 
I'm, I'm, I'm preach and actually I'm very passionate about innovation and safety. And it's not the only technology, uh, digital transformation, uh, artificial intelligence, blockchain, for example, on the environment or not the, in this technological revolution that is called Industry 4.0. But also innovation is part of the Industry 4.0, it's one of the main pillars of Industry 4.0 and inside of innovation we have agile organization, agile leadership, how to build relationship with people, uh, how to share ideas and optimize them as well. And it's something that you need to combine, combine your technology and people. Not only technology, it's technology and people. And if you're gonna use technology, is uh, uh, start measuring the impact of that technology that is positive, is helping you to reduce incidents or not, or is helping you to make a, a, a to make your workplace safer, or it's impacting in a positive way the safety culture that you have. But uh, obviously, you need to you need to have those components in mind, and that's my perspective of this article. It's an excellent article to be honest with you. Very graphic, very very well designed. And the number eight, he's saying that it's maintaining transparency. Absolutely. Um, it's, you know, somebody, uh, you need, on this case, you need to have, and I'm seeing on companies, they have a high, high standards in safety, high, really, really great safety culture. Something is transparency. In other words, uh, they have a has an uh, incident management, uh, an incident uh, communication system. So they have, in this case, they use software, so workers, they can uh, enter uh, hazards, right? Uh, they identify a hazard, they put it on the on the, on the, on the incident uh, identification system. And then uh, the, the, safety, the safety specialist or the safety engineer or the safety professional, uh, in conjunction or with, or, or with, the, uh, uh, with the supervisor or with the manager of the department, they go and talk to the worker, they do a, a, an investigation, uh, could be long or could be a small investigation, and then they determine what actions they need to follow, and they all those actions they are entered on the uh, on the hazard communication, on the uh, incident communi on the uh, incident report. And on, in this case, it's hazard, right? It's not an incident report. It's your hazard uh, communication system, and then everybody notices uh, first from the work floor. You, you imagine you have a a manufacturing business and you have three shifts or two shifts so everybody who's on the second or the third shift they need to be able, need to be aware uh, about the uh, what were the, the actions that were determined to reduce the hazard, that that risk of the hazard so that type of systems and actually is part of core it's uh, incident management uh, how, and hazard identification two elements of core so how you gonna handle that? How you identify? How you reduce? And that system, that process is gonna make uh, is gonna you gonna achieve not only reduce uh, incidents, but also you gonna build trust. That's this element is is preferring. It's to build that transparency, right? And nobody needs to be um, and something that we need to avoid is to be a policeman, obviously. And if somebody has an accident or so, or an injury or or, ha or report a hazard, we need to treat that as a very professional, and we need to involve the people um, to to know their ideas, and uh, and make that uh, workplace uh, works up, uh, yeah, that workstation safer. And that is that's going to increase your safety culture. One day somebody asked me, asked me. Um, uh, what a safety culture looks like in a company. Well, it's pretty much is this point. It's trust and have a, com a communication system back and forth of sharing ideas on how we um, we, uh, we 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 share ideas and optimize them to make to avoid injuries. So there is a safety management program, and this action plan to reduce incident includes transparency, hazard uh, assessments. Uh, how often you assess workstations? Um, so there is a plan, right? That you assess. Uh, what was the last time, for example, when you assess your procedures? I know the procedures. You have a, a management system, a quality management system. It's every two, three years, right? But when was? The, but 
you're gonna wait for two three years to assess if the procedure is right or not it is updated or not absolutely not so take a procedure or take a, a work instruction and talk to the workers and see what has changed in the last six months uh, part of this question that answer of this question is management of change they control change very well that's how uh, in general a good safety culture looks like so that's the thing that i want to share with you guys today about this um, uh, uh, article i'm gonna post it on the uh, on my uh, linking page is efficient 4.0 uh, the, the, the link and also on my facebook as well share with you guys and this is my it's, it's something that i want to uh, give you my input about this excellent article brought by mr mike uh, guta and uh, let me i have his um, biography uh, biography here yeah it's a must the staff writer for a small business trend focusing on business systems gadgets and other small business news so pretty much he's, he's educated on the uh, on a small business and he's a high and he has a background in information and communication technology coordination and yeah he decided to write this uh, this article um, and it's excellent 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 article on eight easiest steps on uh, to look uh, to focus and uh, uh, to make our safety practices better hopefully this video um, and hopefully you, you enjoyed this video hopefully this video helps you to have a to achieve your uh, your goals or at least um, um, to 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 uh, to remind you uh, what practices we need to uh, look like uh, in more uh, detail uh, to uh, to stop people getting injured. Thank you very much. Again, my name is Edgar Eddie Fernandez, the owner of Sufficient Limited uh, uh, Limited, the creator of the uh, Experiential Knowledge Solutions that helps you to. Uh, to stop uh, people getting injured, uh, reducing cost, and increase performance and production by understanding and optimizing the, the ideas of your workers and employees. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.